Good morning, everybody. Lovely sunny morning here in County Armagh in Ireland. This is the video that we've all been really looking forward to making. This is our, our Gardner 4LK engine in a Land Rover Series 2. So here we've got two classical um, engineering um, success stories for the uh, for British engineers. The Gardner, uh, probably the best uh, diesel engine back in the in the 70s, 80s, and well before that, and the Land Rover, of course, which is known all over the world. Um, as you'll have gathered. Um, even at this stage, it was quite a squeeze to get this engine into this uh, engine bay. So I just want to go through a few of the, um, the challenges that we had. First of all, I have to thank Henry Tour from Cumbria. Henry installed a 4LK in, a, in a, a Series 2 just like this about 20 years ago. So we knew the job was possible. We knew it was going to be a success. Uh, Henry tested his vehicle uh, very thoroughly. Henry is a farmer. He also has a garage, so he uses his vehicle for towing uh, breakdowns and all sorts of really, uh, really quite hard work. But Henry didn't retain the four-wheel drive and that left his job a lot easier. The big challenge for us was retaining the four-wheel drive, and that's what our customer wanted. The other initial challenge we had was that the Gardner is quite a wide engine. So in order to bring the shaft, the front shaft, around the bell housing, we had to use what's called a happy shaft. Now, a happy shaft consists of three parts. There's a front section here, there's a middle section which is bolted to the crankcase, to the, uh, to the chassis, sorry, and then you've got the rear uh, section going back to the transfer box on the gearbox. We actually used a uh, we couldn't use the original gearbox again because of space reasons, and we had to change it to uh, a 230 uh, gearbox, which pushed the transfer case back further and allowed uh, less of an angle then on that first section of the shaft. Um, we also had to take out the front seat because there wasn't enough room for that with the gear stock, but we'll see that in a minute. Uh, the sump was another challenge. Uh, this engine had a rear sump pan on it, and we couldn't use that because it impinged on one of the cross members. So we actually had to make uh, a sump. And again, you know, you'll see some stills of that later on. Okay, at this juncture, I want to introduce you to Peter Dubonsky, um, who was the main man on this project. A lot of the design work is down to Peter. He did all the, the hand footy bits, and he's very, very good at that. And I have to thank him so much for a, su <laughs> a super effort on this. You're thing. welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> um, originally, in this vehicle, the gear stick was well forward. It was about here. And the uh, low, high, and front wheel drive gear stick were down here. Um, so, because the whole gearbox and engine all come back, we had to we had to remove the centre seat here, and do this woodwork around here. Uh, we also had to move the dash forward, and we had a, quite a, a bit of a challenge with the with the wiring inside here because it was quite old. We had to we had to redo some of it. Um, we also had to panel around here. You'll see, right? Because otherwise, that there would just have been open space, and you'll see here where there's a protrusion there on the gearbox that we had to cover over. Um, the bonnet uh, is not the original bonnet because the original bonnet had the spare wheel there and that meant there was an indentation in it and that impinged on top of the engine. So we had to change the, the, the bonnet. This bonnet is from the same, se same series as this one, but just without the, uh, without the spare wheel up there. The throttle linkage, of course, as luck would have it, um, the injector pump on the Gardner engine is on this side of the engine. On the original Land Rover engine, it was on this side. So we had to do all sorts of linkages, which we can't see at the minute, but they're inside here, across here, to, to have been able to operate the injector pump. Um, um, vacuum for the brakes was another challenge. Um, on a petrol engine, uh, which was originally in this, there's a butterfly on the inlet manifold which closes whenever you lift your foot off the throttle and put your foot on the brake. And that creates quite a significant vacuum in the inlet manifold, which is used to power the brakes. Now, in a diesel engine, you don't have that. There is no butterfly valve. 
So what we did is we just simply used an electric vacuum pump. So as soon as you put your foot on the pedal, the, the vacuum pump comes on, it works fine. Uh, we had to change the mounts, of course, as expected. So we just use off the shelf <coughs> mounts. <coughs> um, the good news was that we learned from Henry Tour that you don't need a fan with a 4LK. She'll run quite fine uh, without a fan. So that's saving power and also making her less noisy. Um, <coughs> uh, if it improves in future that a fan is needed, it's very easy to fit an electric one. Um, okay, maybe we'll, we'll start her up at this junction and, uh, and go for a drive. <laughs> This is the 4LK that you've seen coming in on the trailer. Uh, this is what we refer to as a core engine. Now, I will confess it looks a bit sad at the minute, but I do assure you we'll restore this like new. It'll have new pistons, new liners, everything checked to make sure it's within tolerance. We've done it just like new. In fact, we've had these Gardner engines, not necessarily 4LKs now, but various Gardner engines that have lain out in a quarry somewhere or, or in a field for years and we've got them into the yard and within a day we've had them running. Incredible. It just shows you um, the standard of build on these engines. Because each Gardner engine was made by one man, they were never mass produced. One man was responsible from start to finish for each engine, which means that it was his, own, his engine, he took ownership of it. And that's why the build quality is so high. In fact, um, I'm not too sure if this is unique to Gardner, but inside a lot of the nuts are actually numbered and have to be put back on in the same sequence, in the same position as they were originally. Amazing. <laughs> 